Hello and welcome to the Beam Channel. Today I want to talk about random numbers in Elixir. But first I want to mention that I'm offering a new service. If you and your team are considering getting started with Elixir and have some questions about how it might fit into your architecture and your system and you'd like to sit down with an expert, I'm now offering a new road mapping service. You can find a link down below and I'll be happy to set up a time to talk to you. That's fairly reasonably priced and we'll answer all your questions and provide you with a nice written guide report to help you get started. Random numbers are really important. We use them all over the place in programming. Everything from cryptography to Monte Carlo simulation to simply randomizing a user interface. For example, you might have a poll, you have four options, you know, A, B, C, and D, and you want to present them in sort of random order, just to counter effects that, you know, people will generally pick the first one or something like that. So the question is how can you generate random numbers in Erlang and Elixir? Well, the obvious answer is you use the crypto module, which is an Erlang module that does cryptography stuff. And there's a function in it, strong random bytes, which will give you n random bytes of binary, which you can then use for whatever you need. This is based on various system, low level system functions and in 99.9% .9 of cases will be more than sufficient for what you need. However, if you would like to increase the entropy of your randomness, and this is mostly theoretical. So for example, let's say you're doing a two phase authentication. You want more randomness in the numbers that go out. Honestly, I don't think you need it, but strong random bytes should be fine. But ignore that for a second. What you could do is create a gen server that will assign those six digit numbers that you're going to send to people right and then have one state that updates so every time somebody asks for one you take the existing state and then you get strong random bytes and you hash them together just do it uh, SHA two, a SHA one hash or whatever and then just takes the first six digits out of that now that has the advantage that you're adding a race condition into your code base now normally race conditions are really bad things you know, they try to avoid them, they make things indeterminate. But of course, we want things to be indeterminate here. There's no way to predict that if you have, you know, 100 requests coming in, in what order that server is going to respond to them. It's, it's totally arbitrary. And in fact, if you have 100 requests coming in, there are 2 to the 100 possible orderings you could have. And I'm going to try to figure out what 2 to the 100 is, except for the fact that it's a really big number that would be an additional source of entropy. Now, you also will need to ask, how does the computer itself generate entropy? Now we're sort of going into the weeds. Linux uses things like t time between IO inputs, so time between packets arriving over the network. Cloudflare, which needs a lot more entropy, actually does stuff, uses some analog devices. They have um, a wall of lava lamps that they use in one location and a radioactive generator they use in another and a chaotic pendulum in a third. Anyway, I hope that was useful. hope that was interesting. And I hope you uh, go write great code. If I can be of service, please give a shout. You can reach me through the com you can reach me in the comments down below.